family one, the ancient civilization uh, text of the Mayans. And let's dig into it. And now they began to act out their self-revelation. Before their grandmother and mother, first they made a garden. We'll just do some gardening. Our dear grandmother and mother, they said, don't worry, we're here. We're your grandchildren. We're the successors of our elder brothers, said Juanapu and Zipalanque. And then they took up their axe, their mattock, their hoe. Each of them went off with a blowgun on his shoulder. They left the house having instructed their grandmother to give them their food. At midday, bring our food, dear grandmother, they said. Very well, my dear grandchildren, said their grandmother. After that, they went to their gardening. They simply stuck their mattock in the ground, and the mattock simply cultivated the ground. And it wasn't only the mattock that cultivated, but also the axe. In the same way, they stuck it in the trunk of a tree, in the same way it cut into the tree by itself. Oh, have you ever seen that Walt Disney, uh, Mickey Mouse is like, uh, he's got the, the brooms are like, he puts them to collect like water and stuff. And then they, uh, they do it themselves and eventually goes like out of control. This is what this is reminding me of. Uh, who wouldn't, you know, think it'd be weird to see like an axe cutting wood all by itself, right? Felling, scattering, felling all the trees in the bushes, now leveling, mowing down the trees. Just the one axe did it. And the mattock breaking up thick masses, countless stalks and brambles. Just one mattock was doing it. Breaking up countless things, just clearing off the whole mountains, small and great. And then they gave instructions to that creature, named the morning dove. They sat on a big stump, and Juanapu and Zipalanque said, Just watch for our grandmother, bringing our food. Cry out right away when she comes, and then we'll grab the mattock and axe. Very well, said the morning dove. This is because all they're doing is shooting. They're not really doing any gardening. <laughs> well, then get to work. And as soon as the dove cries out, they come running, one of them grabbling no, grabbing the mattock and the other grabbing the hoe, and they're tying up their hair. One of them deliberately rubs dirt on his hands. He dirties his face as well, so he's just like a real gardener. <laughs> well, I don't know very many gardeners that just rub dirt on their face. And as for the other, he deliberately dumps wood chips on his head, so he's like a real woodcutter. <laughs> what? That would itch. Oh, that'd be painful, man. Because you get those, it like would be all over your skin and be cutting into you. Once their grandmother has seen them, they, they eat. But they aren't really doing their gardening. She brings their food for nothing. And when they get home, we're really, really ready for bed, our dear grandmother. They say when they arrive, deliberately they massage. They stretch their legs, their arms in front of their grandmother. And when they went on the second day and arrived in the, at the garden, it had all grown up high again. Every tree and bush, every stalk and bramble had put itself back together again. When they arrived, who's been picking us clean, they said. And these are the ones who are doing it. All the animals, small and great, puma, jaguar, deer, rabbit, fox, coyote, peccary, coati, small birds, great birds, they are the ones who did it. They did it in just one night. After that, they started the garden all over again. Just as before, the ground worked itself. Could you, Im could you imagine like how many jobs would be destroyed in the agricultural sector if something like that existed? <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Uh, along with the wood cutting. And then they shared their thoughts. They're on the cleared and broken ground. We'll simply have to keep watch over our garden. Then whatever may be happening here, we'll find out about it, they said when they shared their thoughts. And when they arrived at the house, how could we get picked clean, our dear grandmother? Our garden was tall thickets and groves all over again when we got there a while ago, our dear grandmother. 
they said to their grandmother and mother. <laughs> it's very redundant. So we'll go keep watch because what's happening to us is no good, they said. After that, they wound everything up and then they went back to the clearing. And there they took cover. And when they were there, well hidden there, all the animals gathered together. Each one sat on its haunches, all the animals small and great. And this was the middle of the night when they came. They all spoke when they came. This is what they said. Arise, conjoin your trees. Arise, conjoin you bushes. They said. Then they made a great stir beneath the trees and bushes. Then they came nearer. And then they showed their faces. The first of these were the puma and the jaguar. The boys tried to grab them, but they did not give themselves up. That's pretty brave. I don't know if I saw a jaguar that I'd be like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab it. <laughs> or a puma, man. They pounce really well. When the deer and rabbit came near, they only got them by the tail, which just broke off. Interesting. So the deer and the rabbit probably represent speed. The puma and the jaguar probably represent fierceness. So Hanapu and Zipalanke trying to grab those animals probably symbolizes a lot more behind it. The deer left its tail in their hands. When they grabbed the tail of the deer along with the tail of the rabbit, the tails were shortened. But the fox, coyote, and peccary, coati, did not give themselves up. And all the animals went by in front of Hanapu and Zipalanke. That's the end of that one. Now it's going to go on to the next line. So now there was a fire in their hearts, because they didn't catch them. And one more came, the last one now, jumping as he came. Then they cut him off. In their net they caught the rat. And then they grabbed him and squeezed him behind the head. They tried to choke him. They burned his tail over a fire. Ouch. Ever since the rat's tail got caught, there's been no hair on its tail. <laughs> That's super clever. That... That's So that's how the rat lost its hair is because Juanapu and Zipalanke held its tail over the fire. Ouch. There's been no hair on its tail and his eyes have been the way they are since the boys tried to choke him. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you got that. But kind of sometimes uh, uh, rat's eyes kind of have like a little bulge a little bit. They kind of stick out. And there's th it's sad, uh, but for example, rodents, right? they get squeezed their eyes will pop out right i remember when i had a hamster it's a little tiny one it's the, it looks like a mouse but it doesn't have a tail they're kind of fat uh and uh i remember my friend telling me like uh don't squeeze them because the eyes will pop out and i was like why would i squeeze it and they're like well sometimes they get away right you want to grab them real quick and sometimes you can grab too hard and their bodies are so fragile you can break their limbs you got to be careful that's why you don't let them out of their cage too much. So I think it's funny <laughs> that in this legend, Honapu and Zipulanke, the reason why a rat's tail and eyes look the way it does is because of them. <laughs> Honapu and Zipulanke. I will not die by your hand. Gardening is not your job. But there is something that is, said the rat. Oh, snap, the rat's tail. Where is, where is what is ours? Go ahead and name it, the boys told the rat. Will you let me go then? My word is in my belly, and after I name it for you, you'll give me my morsel of food, said the rat. We'll give you your food, so name it, he was told. Very well, it's something that belonged to your fathers, named one Hanapu and seven Hanapu, who died in Shibalba. What remains is their gaming equipment. They left it up under the roof of the house, their kilts, their wrist guards, their rubber ball, but your grandmother doesn't take these down in front of you. Because this is how your fathers died. You know the truth, don't you? The boys told the rat. There was a great joy in their hearts when they got word of the rubber ball. When the rat had named it, they gave the rat his food. And this is food. Corn kernels, squash seeds, chili, beans, patate, cacao. These are his. I know... For sure, I've seen my rat, my pet rat would eat everything, so I could totally see him eating this. He liked pizza a lot. His name was Bilbo Baggins after Lord of the Rings. Uh, Bilbo was the one who, you know, started the whole journey with Gollum and, you know, Smog. 
if anything of yours is stored or gets wasted oh and then my other rat's name was el gordo zorro i don't know if you've seen the mask of zorro by with antonio banderas so when i call him el gordo it means like the fat one in spanish and obviously antonio and banderas wasn't fat so it's like a satire side note uh, the rat was told by juanapu and zipalanque very well boys but what will your grandmother say if she sees me he said don't be faint-hearted we're here we know what our grandmother needs to be told we'll set up we'll set you up under the corner of the roof right away when that's taken care of you'll go straight to where the things were left and we'll look up there under the roof but it's our new stew we'll be looking at they told the rat when they gave him his instructions Juanapu and Zipalanque made their plans overnight and arrived right at noon and it wasn't obvious that they had a rat with them when they arrived one of them went right inside the house when they reached it while the other went to the corner of the house quickly setting up the rat and then they asked their grandmother for their meal just grind something for our stew. We want chili sauce, our dear grandmother, they said. After that, she ground chili for their stew. A bowl of broth was set out in front of them, but they were just fooling their grandmother and mother. They had emptied their water jar. We're really parched. Bring us a drink, they told their grandmother. Yes, she said. Then she went, and they kept on eating. They weren't really hungry. They just put on a false appearance. And then they saw the rat reflected in their chili sauce. Ooh! <laughs> oh, could you imagine eating some food and be like, this is a reflection of a rat in my soup. <laughs> imagine that Yelp review. <laughs> Here was the rat loosening the ball that had been left in the peak of the roof. When they saw him in the chili sauce, they sent a mosquito that creatured the mosquito similar to a gnat. He went to the water, then he punctured the side of the grandmother's jar. The water just gushed out from the side of his, her jar. She tried, but she could not stop up the side of her jar. What has our grandmother done? We're choking for lack of water. Our parched throats will do us in, they told their mother when they sent her there. After that, the rat cut the ball loose. It dropped from beneath the hoof along the yokes, wrist guards, kilts. These were taken away then, then they went to hide them on the road. The road to ball court. After that, they went to join their grandmother at the water, and their grandmother and mother were unable to stop up the side of the jar, either one of them. After that, the boys arrived, each with his blow gun, when they arrived at the water. What have you done? We've got weary at heart, so we came, they said. Look at the side of my jar. It cannot be stopped, said their grandmother, and they quickly stopped it up. And they came back together, the two of them ahead of their grandmother. In this way, the matter of the rubber ball was arranged. <laughs> oh, that's so clever. I mean, wow. A oh, cool, like, the, the mosquito was like a helper, which usually, traditionally, the mosquito, you know, gives you malaria, gives you the West Nile virus. Uh, I know when I get bit by mosquitoes, I swell up really bad. It hurts. Um, oh. They're just in your ear. You're like, get away from me. Oh, they're terrible. Uh, but that's funny that, you know, in the story, uh, the mosquito is kind of like, you know, not too annoying. And that the rat is, uh, you know, he's having a full-on conversation. <laughs> clever, clever, man. Those Mayans. 